Good evening! Happy Friday! Welcome to Easy 8. My name's Danny, says it right at the bottom of the screen. This is Easy 8's online painting club. Welcome for episode 45. Time is marching on, isn't it? I wrote that on the Facebook page. I really do want something to show for episode 45. I want to have actually finished something. I've got so many started projects in and around the studio, around my house, dotted around. I'm sure my housemates and my partner would agree that it's time to get something finished. So today, in earnest, I'm gonna be cracking on with what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks now, my Skitari Rangers from Games Workshop. Um, I've had very little to do with them this week. I have tinkered with them a little bit, but I'll go into that in just a moment. If you are new here at Easy8, it's not a tutorial channel or anything like that at all. It's literally a place where you can just hang out, make some friends, maybe come along with some friends and just kind of be a part of the live action because it's a live broadcast uh, and just kind of get your stuff painted in a community spirit. Maybe you want to ask some questions, show off something that you've been painting off and are particularly proud of, uh, or maybe you just kind of want to get a bit of praise for something. Maybe you want to talk about somebody else's stuff and you want to kind of get a bit of a community spotlight going. We haven't done community spotlight for ages, uh, but it's something that we can do. So if you want to show some stuff off, uh, get in contact with me. Drop me a line over there in the live chat, in the comment section below, in the YouTube video there, or on Facebook if you want to as well. Because we're not just here on, uh, on, on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we're also in Discord where you can find us after the show for the uh, Easy 8 uh, after party. I forgot what it was called then. There's always something every week, isn't there? I always mess something up. So, yeah, come along and, you know, vote for someone. Maybe go like, hey, this guy needs to show his stuff off, or I want to show my stuff off, and, yeah, you know, we'll put some photos up and talk about it, or whatever. If you don't want to, that's fine. Cool. I hope you guys have had a great week. I've been really busy. After that busy period I had at work, when we all thought that it was going to start quieting down, it got busy. So, yeah, for these next couple of weeks, it's just a bit a bit bonkers um but we're, we're, the end is in sight so i've just got like another crazy bonkers week to go and then i think we can all start seeing a little bit of a relaxing at work as we move into the winter i feel like i've been saying that for a while I feel like I'm being tricked by the gods that be. Um, but it is, it is a fact. Uh, I'm going away this week on a training course for work. So I'm hoping to have uh, a bit done before I go away. Because I'm not sure how much I'm going to have done or even prepare for next week's show. I am back for next week's show. Um, so unless there's going to be any severe problems with that, then you know I, I will make sure that I communicate if there is. But the, you know I, I hope to be here for Friday. It's just about what I can do and get ready. I've got some projects on the go that I've also been working on whilst dipping in and out with this. Skitari Rangers this week um, because I'm always trying to think of the next project ahead. I always like to keep it a little bit fresh, uh, at least on the show. I know I'm painting my miniatures, you're painting your miniatures, but I do like to mix it up. I don't like to keep it, you know, the same. It gets boring, it gets stagnant, doesn't it? So I like to be able to put something away, come back to it later after another project. I've got a really exciting project, well, I'm really excited for it, and I'm not really going to talk about it too much yet because I'm going to blow all the content, um, but I, I do have some exciting things that I'm going to experiment with that I've never done before. I've seen a lot of stuff on it, especially recently. I've been looking into it a bit more, but I've got a new painting technique, a new style to try and achieve, uh, and a new range of miniatures. Not a new range of miniatures, but something that I haven't worked on on this show before. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. That may be next week, maybe the week after, depending on how much time I have to prepare for it. I don't think it's going to be an awful lot of time, so it might just be that you know next week we carry on with the project that I've got here. Anyway, I'm not alone this evening. I can see Jeff, I can see Luke and Chris all saying hello in their own classic ways, waiting for me before the show even started. Hi guys, thanks for coming along once again. You're my regular viewers. Uh, Jeff is my dad, and before we get involved here, I just wanted to say happy birthday, Dad, because he's 61 today. Cheers, mate. Uh, just a quick phone call with him just before we went live. He's like, oh, what are you doing phoning me? You want to get on? Go do video. <laughs> Happy birthday, mate. Hope you're having a cracking day. Sorry I haven't got to see you today. Hope to be around at the weekend some point. I've got a beer with me today uh, to say cheers, but we do drinks after the intermission. So uh, I don't know why I'm waving my hands like some sort of karate kid. Wax on, wax off. I don't, yeah, I don't know why I'm doing. I'm a bit. It's been a, it's been a hectic day. It's been a hectic day. So some tea. Cheers. 
I'd love to know what it is that you're working on. Uh, normally that's something that Kyle would say. My co-host has not been here for such a long time. Um, but, you know, we all have lives. We've all got work. Uh, you know, not all my viewers can watch it every single week because of lives as well. I haven't heard from him for a little while. But Luke is his brother. Uh, shows me that, he's, that he is around. He is alive. And he's just been very, very busy. And um, we do hope to see Kyle at some point. Uh, normally he would say, tell us what you're working on. I'd love to know what you're working on. It is, it is a social club. It is a painting club. Please do let me know. You don't even have to be painting miniatures. I know some of you paint canvases. Chris, I know you do. Jeanette, I'm probably not online right now, but might be a little bit later on. Does those little tiny stud diamond art things. There's incredible detail in there. I'd love to know what it is you're doing, because if you're just coming along for the company, I'm honoured. Thank you very much for coming along. Jeff says, cheers, buddy. Nah, no worries. 61. Where, where did that go? We were just saying that on the phone earlier on. 61. Crazy. Hey, someone said to me a little while ago, um, when, when you get to it, it doesn't have to be any particular age. You can just choose when you start doing it. But if you just start swapping your, na your numbers over, then uh, sometimes it's beneficial. Like, um, I'm 90, uh, 93 at the moment, but in a couple of months, I get a four. So that's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe you're 16 again. Who would want to be 16 again? No. Not me. <laughs> or, or do levels. So you can be level 61 today. That's a good level, that is. Anyway, let's let's stop talking here. Let's get over to the workbench and have a little look. What I've got here. Yeah, this is cool. This is the big block of polystyrene-y stuff. It's kind of a weird polystyrene, like a foam. Um, I, I did it. I, I, made, I made little spiky bits to go in any form of corks. So I've got somewhere to hold all my miniatures together. I had it for a couple of weeks and just not been able to get around to doing it. I had to drill little holes into the bottom of all the corks. And uh, yeah, that is smelly stuff. Um, it, it was so tight a fit with little bits of paper clip that I put in there that I didn't have to glue them in. What I haven't done yet is I haven't actually glued these bits in them. So sometimes when I'm painting them, they kind of like spin around a bit, which is a bit frustrating, but yeah, maybe I'll get to it later. Who knows? Um, I was going to like put little markings on here as to where I've put them, but I suppose I can just keep on stabbing it in over and over again. Lots of things still to do with these. Uh, what I did do, what I did gone and do. Oh, I've got a little bit of super glue stuck in my desk there. That's irritating. What I have gone and done uh, is I've toned down some of the weathering on their cloaks. Let's just pull one of these off here. Let's get this guy. Pop these guys over here. So we all remember a couple of weeks ago when I was putting a, a little bit of, um, I just put a bit of Ser I'll come into shot, a bit of Seraphim Sepia uh, into the cloaks just to kind of give them a little bit of character, a little bit of weathering, tone down the bright orange. Um, I put a little bit of Agrax Earthshade at the bottom to sort of simulate weathering and grime kind of climbing up the cloak, which uh, I put on too heavy. I realise in hindsight, my Marshall is right here. Did the same with him. You can see how much heavier I went on this one. So, um, yeah. Went a bit too heavy. What I decided to do was get a little bit of um, airbrush thinner or airbrush cleaner. Uh, get it on the end of a brush and just dab it. Just dab it away. Just kind of remove it. And I, and I removed as much as I could on all of them before it started making a bit of a mess. So I might see if I can soften it, because what we want now is a kind of stark contrast, which is kind of pooled, uh, which is not ideal, really. I, I've almost ruined them, but I'll, I'll cover it up. I'm sure I'll be fine. As so I'm just going to put a little bit of seraphim sepia just along the edges to hopefully try and blend it away. I'm sure they all look really, really cool when they're all, like, weathered up and whatever. Um, weathered up and whatever. Weird. So yeah, that's that's what I did this week. Um, what I'm going to be doing this week is just getting on with some silver because that's that's a grimy little job. Um, I could also be doing the, the wood on the guns because last week, if you remember, where the overspray from the orange on the airbrush was, I got it onto the backs of the guns. So I just painted a little bit of white onto the back of the stocks there. Um, so they can all be stained with my wood effect. Uh, and I've also got the legs of all these guys. So they've got the overalls on there. So I've got like some... Uh, staining colors to do on there as well so there's a couple of things I can do I'm sure I'm gonna get very very bored of silver because the silver it's got to go into these if I bring this nice and close bring a light in here we are so the silver has got to go into some very tight areas in here and around underneath the hoods and inside the hoods it's gonna be very easy to mess up the orange 
So what I could do is give these guys a quick lick of varnish to protect it so that I could then go in and clean it up a little bit after if I wanted to. But I don't really want to. I think it's an, an extra lay an extra sort of level an extra thing for me to do that's just going to delay me getting them finished um and you never know i might want to go back and try and you know tone down the the weathering at the bottom of their cloaks this is one of the starker ones they're one of the worst ones um i'm a little bit out of shot so i wonder if i can maybe move my my camera focus up a little bit what happens if i go this way no that's the wrong way let's go here <laughs> there we go i'll bring it up over here a little bit maybe i'll bring it back a bit more let me know if it's a problem. I hope you can see in here okay. Couple of comments going on. Luke says, oh sorry, Jeff says, it's not funny anymore. What's not funny? The getting older bit or the jokes about getting older or the leveling. Being 61. It's your first day of 61. How can it not be funny anymore? Luke says, he's still alive in reference to Kyle. He left his glasses down here three months ago uh, and they're going to get mailed. <laughs> Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, as for what I'm doing, PC file and startup deleting, four minute startup times. Yeah, you want to sort that out. That, that's, a, that's a, yeah, poor, poor little PC. Hopefully, you're going to be painting some Sisters Battles troops or a gobbo. Ooh, interesting. That's a goblin, I believe, for anyone who's interested. I'm enjoying the tea. Mmm, lovely. Okay, so let's let's get started here I want to get started on some silver so I'm gonna pick one I'm gonna go with my alpha which is my sergeant guy which is this guy right over here at the end because he's the one I've always started with um, and I just yeah I, I just would like to so I'm not so worried about holding this miniature. I think it might be a little bit easier than holding him with the with the cork on. So I'm just going to pop him off the cork. And just pop that down over there, just for now. I've got this little paper clip. Well, it's actually just a piece of like garden wire more than anything, because it's really quite thin and easy to bend, and I quite like it. I'll just bend a little loop at the bottom, just like that, which means I can hold him nice and easily without him spinning around all over the place. There we go. That's nice. <clears throat> Corks are great, but I'm using them to hold on armatures for everything, and everything's going to kind of get in the way, and I, and I don't want that. So there we go. That's that guy here. What I'm also going to do a little bit later on is I'm going to put a little bit of varnish on the Marshall's base because I'm still working on a base theme. I kind of know what I'm doing, but I'm just practicing it. This is just the... Uh, it's not the Martian Iron Earth from Citadel. It's the uh, Martian Earth from Green Stuff World. It works a little differently, has the same characteristics, but it just kind of behaves ever so slightly differently. Um, so the cracks, I've had to apply it a couple of times to try and make those cracks a bit more defined. I would like them to be a bit bigger. What I did is I went and put um, a little wash of Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of it, as per the instructions of our guru, Duncan Rhodes. <laughs> and it works really well, but all I think I did is I might have not left the um, drying time for the crackle paint long enough, and I think it might have stopped it from cracking too much maybe it has left it slightly glossy so i'm going to tame that down with a bit of matte varnish later on and then there's more weathering effects and things in there to do i've also super glued a couple of little stones from my little sand pot on there which i've also got to be painted but that's for another day that's not for today maybe if i've got the airbrush out later on I'm looking for something to break up the time then i can do some uh, matte varnishing on there darren's come to join us this evening evening all hi darren thanks for coming along i hope you're well we were chatting the other day i hope you're still well so, where are my colours? Going to be moving into a little bit of chainmail here. Can I get my little plastic palette? I, I've still, I've, I've had a little bit of a tidy up in here, um, but I've not had a cracking huge tidy up. A cracking huge, what am I talking about? I've not had a massive tidy up. Um, so I still don't have the space for my wet palette, which is fine, it's fine. It's nice to use a, a, a dry palette from time to time. Just gonna give this a really good shake. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna put a couple of drops in now. I'm not gonna go crazy by putting loads and loads because it's an airbrush uh, paint. It is a totally usable by brush, which is why I use it. Uh, it saves me buying two sets of colors. Uh, one for airbrush and one for brush. That would kind of be a bit silly in my mind. Um, I, could I could put um, sort of 
uh, paint retard or something in there but it might just thin it down a little bit and uh, the silver has been going on and the orange has been going on really really thin when I'm applying it by brush and it's taking a couple coats more than I'd like so rather than applying things to water it down and make it even more exacerbated that's the correct term um, I thought I'd just kind of keep it to a small amount in there so here we go this guy's also got this um, taser goad which is just basically a giant cattle prod um, yeah when you hit people with it you have a potential to hit even more people because it arcs lightning why not <clears throat> so let's just get started then shall we so I'm looking I'm using my Marshall Heroes reference to find out what parts I want silver his pauldrons in his chest plate and that kind of thing that sort of that collar thing that kind of goes over here as well uh, I might do some gold edging on them less is more remember I'm gonna bring my lights in a bit closer so I don't end up creating shadows everywhere that's a bit better isn't it yeah right I'm just gonna go for it I suppose let's just let's start just, let's get a little bit of paint moving let's just put it on this little pauldron is it a pauldron or is it an epaulette this shoulder piece here when does an epaulette become a sh when does an epaulette become a pauldron it's the big questions that we ask here on this show like the questions I ask the kids at work what is your favorite flavor crisp life-changing questions things that you've got to know So another thing that I've been thinking about here as well are the hoses. So I'm painting a little hose here now. Now on the back of this guy here, I've got a hose and a couple of pipes or tubes or wires or cables or whatever. Uh, and I always paint them silver because I think that is something that echoes from being a child. If ever I saw anything that looked like a hose or a pipe, I painted it silver because that's what color the hoses and cables are, right? Well, clearly that's wrong. It, it, it was an opportunity to paint some detail with silver because I thought silver was cool but actually I've seen so much reference work on these things where the hoses are actually just black and it looks so good but I want to like add detail to it by like highlights or shades or something like that and I can never seem to do it any justice but do you know a closer examination everything that I've been looking at it's it's just plain just plain black I, I want to kind of get your opinion on it. Shall I go back over all the things I've done with the hoses? And shall I just paint them black and just kind of let them sit like that? Or shall I try and shade them or, or highlight them a little bit after I've painted that on? I don't know. I think I'm going to have to get my uh, Klinsky brush out because it's got a finer tip. <laughs> Some comments going in. Uh, Jeff says, "When it's armor, when it's armor." Sorry, I don't know what you what you mean. When it's armor, when it's armor, have I? Hmm. Sorry, I, I've 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 lost what you're trying to say. You have to type out what you mean there. Right. Kalinsky brush. It's got a bigger belly, but the point goes really fine. That already, that's going to help me loads. It's a superior brush in, in many aspects. I think I'm going to go silver around around here because it looks like that's still a part of the chest piece. I'm going to try and not get it on the cog and skull icon in the middle there. Just because it's just, I don't know, I've, I've been told that metallic paint is 
harder to paint over I've never really experienced that myself but I'm not the best painter so I should probably just shut my mouth <clears throat> Jeff says shoulders oh epaulets pauldrons right yeah okay epaulets are not armor for sure right I understand apologies Got a little bit of silver on that cog icon there, but I can't help that. That's okay though. Frustratingly, there are a couple of purity seals on this guy here. Um, Epaulets are decorative. Oh, okay, cool. You can have decorative pauldrons, right? These purity seals, though very cool, are right over the top of that piece of armor. So make sure that I don't go over onto the orange where I want it to stay orange. There's another hose in there as well. It was actually the cable in there. Cables and hoses. Now on all the box art, all the cables are painted black and yellow hazard striping. And, and I'm not good enough to do that nicely on all of these little cables. And, and I kind of want to get these, these things done relatively quick, just so I've got something to show for all my time. So I'm not going to do hazard striping on cables. And now though I will continue to do all my hoses and cable silver Just making sure I paint around the edges. And all the little sockets that the um, the hoses attach into. <laughs> lovely. Oh, that's lovely. Just that little bit. That pistol is just a little bit in the way. Just going to take my time. All the others don't have like any arms attached to them. Well, that, the arms that they do have attached are kind of out of the way. So this is the only one where I'm going to experience this little frustrating bit of can I get the paint in the tiny little bit of detail. Uh, Jeff says uh, copper and brass are good for cables. Very steampunk. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. When I first painted my Space Marines a couple of years ago, um, a paint scheme that's old and not as good as I can make it now, I actually did all the cables like uh, like gold or bronzy kind of brassy colour. Um, so maybe that is something that I can try and improve on. But that does bring me neatly into not being able to paint gold very well. That was actually a subject I wanted to bring up last week, I think, but never got around to it because I forgot about it because I'm a terrible broadcaster um, oh, just focusing and concentrating <laughs> um, I'm not very good at painting gold and once I've just finished this little bit here I'll show you exactly what it is I'm referring to and it's a problem it is a problem as well it's, it, yeah. it's something that I encounter a lot The new painting scheme that I, I'm talking about uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, actually might completely eliminate the problem that I have with that. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very experimental uh, phase of my painting. Um, so I, I don't know. I, kinda, I know what to expect. I don't know if I'm going to get 
what it is that I want. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to get stuck into it. We'll find out more. Just running out of a little bit of paint here in the palette. So just as I get to the end of painting this guy's face mask. And it can be quite tempting just as I'm finishing and running out of paint to just kind of want to rush the process and, and not get more paint in the paint palette. And just kind of just make do. I'm just trying to really take my time because I don't want to ruin it because that's what I always do nearly ruined it then by flipping the miniature around in my fingers it's a little bit that needs to go under there no nope, I'm gonna need to wash my paintbrush out before the paint dries in the bristles and I'm gonna need to get another drop of paint in the paint palette so before I carry on this is what I was talking to. Uh, talking to, talking about, yeah, I'm tired, can you tell? So I've got all the gold details on here. I really like where the gold is. I like where it's, uh, you know, where it's positioned and how much there is of it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but all the, all the all the gold to me looks very gaudy. And I, and I wonder why that is. Is that just because I've applied matte varnish to it? Is it a little bit shiny? That's, that's okay. But the gold is somehow lost. And I know that the colour of gold is very close to the colour of the orange, especially when it's bleached under the lights here in front of my face. Um, I've stained them or washed them or shaded them with either seraphim. I think it was seraphim I did this time around. Uh, Agrax as a shade can be very good to do it to do it with, but it just never seems right. It always seems thick. It always seems heavy. Like I'm almost missing out on so much detail here, and it. I think it's a lot of it is down to the definition and I, I want to know how you paint gold can you paint it well even in small details like this is it is it lost does it stand out tell me your ways because gold is probably the thing that I suck at painting the most and I want to not suck at it so yes thank you tell me I've put a little bit of seraphim on these they've got little buttons on these buckles and i can only just see them because my eyes are close enough but from over here if i move away from it it's just stuff just stuff and actually this this character is is very busy there's a lot going on here probably too much but you know it's the whole point right so that yeah i'd like to know how you paint gold thank you very much luke says I have a strange bias for green cables. <laughs> so when I first started painting, um, it was always silver. And then as I kind of moved on a little bit, I went into like different colors. So every cable had to be a different color within its cluster. So you have like yellow, green, blue, red, because when you open up circuit boards, they're all different colors, right? Yeah, I wasn't very good at it either. back before I knew thinning paints was a thing so my paints always went on really thick and it was just lost in a crusty pile of too much paint right a bit of fresh paint in here cleaned out the paintbrush Just taking extra special care to not get it on his hood, which around here is so easy to do. There are a couple of little details that poke through his hood. I assume he must have little holes in his hood. Maybe it helps his hood stay up. So we've got this little antenna thing here. We've got this little pokey out cable here. Strange bias for green cables. <laughs> A great sentence that is. It's funny isn't it how your brain kind of just gets hooked on something.
Just trying to be so careful. It's these little details that I can really mess up on, so I'm just trying to take my time. Look this little torch unit or whatever it is. Maybe a little scanner or something. Maybe being sci-fi, it's not a torch. Maybe it is something that scans for certain types of life form. Like in my favorite film, Aliens, maybe they don't show up under infrared at all. Like the second Predator movie, when it's kind of going through all the different scanning options, when it's scanning for the guys in the avatar. Something like that, maybe. Or maybe it's just a torch. Little petzel head torch. <laughs> Five easy eight points if you can write petzel along the side of that. <laughs> There's a lot of breath holding here. Whew. I can see that another comment's gone in. I'll be right there. Every time I look at it, there's just like a little piece that I've missed, and I'm just trying to make sure that I get them all. Now, I do all the eye lenses blue because it's the aesthetic from the book, uh, and I really like it, and I'm going to stay with it. I've done the blue eye lenses on the Marshall. But I wonder if I should do a little blue lens up there as well. What did I do on this guy? So I did a blue eye lens on him. And then he has a servo score with a couple of red lights on it. Should I do it as a red light? Should I do it as another blue light? Ooh, the ideas. Possibilities. Right, now I've got to do... I might do his little belt buckle gold or brass or something. I'm going to stay with doing the hoses. Should I do the hoses black or... I don't know. I like the idea of doing the things um, brass now, so I might do brass on on pipes. Okay, do you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that a thing. Okay, I'll come back for those details. That's a good suggestion. I like it. So, uh, Jeff says it needs edging and shading. I used a deep brown black to make it pop a bit more but my painting was not as fine as yours well thank you very much good suggestion though luke says i'm a fan of uh doing balthazar gold uh a light brass dark gold with a wash of reichland flesh shade uh, uh then uh highlight in two steps first all round with a light gold and second silver over the uh, over the lower left parts okay cool this is some good ideas so He's edging and shading a drop of black or brown to make it pop. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, okay, maybe I just need to change the color that I um, shade with. Um, so perhaps I use Reichland Flesh Shade because Seraphim Sepia is, is quite close to the gold color. I know it's brown, and but you, do you know what I mean? They, they are quite close, and it's it might, it might kind of get lost in translation. And then, of course, if I wanted to go even darker and move away from those orangey tones that the Flesh Shade has, I could move into Agrax for those very, very dark brown colors. didn't know what parts of the taser goes to paint and what colors I, I just didn't know so I just thought you know what it's all going silver <laughs> keep it simple maybe the handle part should be black because it might display it might show that it's you know not all metal because you wouldn't want it all to be metal because you'd get conducted But for now, it can all go silver. Got a couple of other, uh, one rogue or two rogue uh, bristle hairs there. And I'm clashing with my light a lot. <laughs> Back of the paintbrush.
that one rogue hair could be causing me so much problems if I'm not careful, so I might have to trim him off in a minute. I'm gonna paint the pommel of his sword and the kind of the guard there, which I might come back and paint another colour later, but for now. It all just goes silver. Maybe I'll paint some like brass parts on it as well. There's a lot more metal on this guy than there are on everybody else. I'm hoping I'll be able to speed through the others a bit more. Do you think I need to wash the brush out again though? Do you know, I think I'm going to paint this belt buckle. I'm going to paint it silver because there's going to be some brass. Um, it's going to be some brass pipes and things around him, so I think there'll be too much brass or gold in this one area. And silver, I want to be the main, the main colour, the main metallic colour. I could paint the whole. I could paint the belt with like a side bits there with a with a browny colour, but I can't be bothered. So yeah, it's gonna make it all like one large belt buckle. And voila. Let's wash the brush out. Let's see if I can get that rogue bristle as well. Right, pop him back on the cork. Bye bye. There he goes. And I'll take this guy. So I've got to make sure that I paint the, the pauldrons on the other arms because obviously I've taken the gun arm off of him, but it should be much easier to paint. Let's see. Still got that rogue bristle. There it is. It. Might just have to deal with that guy quickly, but without pulling any more out because they seem to attract others. Let's pull you down here. Okay. I did have a little snippy snip thing here to do it with, but I've misplaced it because I'm so clever. Right. Perhaps I'll just try and cut it down. Pull it out with this. Oh, there we go. That did the job. Okay. I don't like removing bristles from my expensive brushes, but sometimes it's got to be done much better. Okay, cool. We can crack on with our lives. Again, just bending this piece of wire so I can hold it nice and easily. Beautiful. Here we go. How's the uh, computer startup time going, Luke? I was going well, mate. Hope you're getting around to doing a bit of painting this evening. Easy Eight Computer Boot Up Club. Is that all a bionic part there? Is that a bit? Of, that's a bit of fabric sticking out over there, isn't it? So I don't know what this all is here. That's a Pauldron. So let's make that map. That's a part of the pauldron as well. It comes down to a part of the van brace. I know my armor parts. Being a sword fighter, reenactor, show fighter, armor wearer for many, many years, I know my armor. I just don't know what epaulets are. <laughs> This guy's got little pipes going around outside of his hood. I th 
think that is supposed to be just here. I think that's supposed to be like a, a cable of some sort. So I'll paint that silver there. I'll just leave it for now. And I'll come back to it later on. This is cloth here. This is a bionic arm. So let's paint that. Slap some silver onto that. Now, like the legs, I've noticed there's like a little, it's almost capped with little bolts that go into the side of it. So I'm going to take the silver right up to the edge here. started holding onto the miniature now because it's a little bit easy but my hands aren't that sweaty at the moment. It's when my hands get sweaty that I need to not be holding onto the miniature. Maybe sweaty whilst painting for any number of reasons. Number one, it could just be very warm in here. Now at the moment it's quite nice. Other times it's just when I'm kind of concentrating too much or I've been painting for too long of an evening. Sometimes I just kind of get a little bit too focused and the way that my body deals with that is by just making my hands sweat or my fingertips sweat which just damages the miniature. It kind of sounds gross, but it's a fairly normal thing, I suppose, having sweaty hands. But um, yeah, don't don't make it ruin your work. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'll paint this little hose that comes out of it. But now, silver. But once I've done all the ranges and I'm looking at them all together with the marshal, so I'll have a look at the hose thing and I might spend uh, an afternoon just going through and making them all black. I think this is like a little armor elbow piece here. So I'm going to go in and paint that as well. Just kind of extends up into his sleeve. There we go. I like it. Stands out quite nicely. It's good, good starkness. So Luke says, uh, things are still slow. Uh, things like the crash and things that I know I've uninstalled like to reappear. I hate that. It means you're just embedded somewhere in there. Get out. Yeah, sneaky. Well, my favourite thing is uh, when a Windows decides it's going to have an update, it resets all the personalised settings. Because, you know, that's what you want, right? Is it? I tell you what, it's not. Especially when you're trying to run a live show. <laughs> Gets my goat. Well, normally I get very frustrated painting silver. It doesn't want to behave the way I want it to, but this is actually the catharsis that I needed this evening after a very long day. So, um, yeah, I'm actually having a blast. Need to wash my brush out again there. Get into that stage. There's this little ring that kind of goes around this button, if you like, which is where the backpack fits to. But it looks very mechanical even though it is just something for the backpack to fix to. But it will show up. You'll probably never see it. I will. So I'm making sure that I just go all the way around it because I don't want any orange to show through. And I'm still doing those little sockets where the cables and hoses go into silver as well. There we go. I come back and do all the, the hoses and stuff later. 
should I do the hoses now? Because I'm doing hoses silver, aren't I? Oh, I get myself self in such a tears, I really do. Okay, let's do hoses. Hoses silver. Cables brass. A little bit of overpaint there, but you know what? Who cares? metal all the down the front here you can be wondering now if I missed that on the alpha I'll have a little look in a second no nope, I need to wash the brush it's not transferring very well from the bristles so again another quick rinse out Jeff goes on to say would it not work if you were very very lightly painted the orange back onto the coat to tone down the dirty stain you have yeah I could do um, but the, the orange being quite a stark colour might just over brighten again because in, in this area where it's just orange, it's not just plain orange. It's got that, that light brown wash on it as well. So I'd have to kind of go over with the orange again and then blend it with, and with the sepia colour. So I could do, yes, is the short answer. I'm going to have a go just kind of blending it in with the sepia because I think that would be an easier way to start and see what sort of effect that has. Some of them are quite stark, aren't they? But you know, learning curve, that's what I'm doing. Lovely. Right, need a few more drops of silver paint. I'm going to take the opportunity to wash the brush out again. Why not? Let's get a couple more drops of silver in there. Chris, you're very quiet in the comments there tonight, but I know you're there watching. How are you doing this evening? Are you well? How is life treating you? Have you been painting this evening? Are you painting this evening? Have you been painting recently? Moving inside the hood now. Doing that little face mask, which I think looks awesome. It's that aesthetic that I really like with the Skatari. It's one of the things that really drew me to them. real gas mask spectre kind of feel but what I really like is the blue eyes They're supposed to have their um, eyelids removed so they're just in this kind of optical fluid because the uh, the tech priests who basically masquerade as their gods, basically watching everything on their on the webcam, if you like, through their eyes. And every time they blink, of course, there's missing data. When you're a computer, or have computer parts in your brain, that's uh, a lot of missed data. So, um, yeah, remove your eyelids, put your eyes in a, a lubricating source. <laughs> for lack of a better word. And that way you never miss a thing. I 
bit of a cramp in my painting paintbrush arm. It's a bit uncomfortable, but we'll we'll push through. Lovely. It's all looking very good at the moment. Uh, Jeff says, did you have a chance to look at that new resin slash clay I told you about? No, I haven't. Uh, you, you jotted it down for me in a piece of paper. It's in the room behind me. Um, I haven't stopped uh, at work at the moment. It, like I say, it's, it's not. I'm not just saying I've been busy. Like I'm, I'm doing um, my shortest day so far was today, which was a 10 hour shift with a 20 minute lunch break. Um, it's just been back to the you know, you know, you know, backs against the walls kind of uh, work at the moment. It is coming down. I will get a chance to have a look at it. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we, uh, evening. Um, I'm hoping. Um, so no, I haven't. But it is exciting for sculpting and moulding and all sorts of cool stuff. So if Leslie, I know you're not watching right now, but perhaps you watch this back on replay later on. If you're into sculpting um, terrain bits for your uh, game boards. Uh, there are products out there where you can like press like polymer clay, but you can push them really soft, you know, like a really soft material, but it dries as hard as resin. Um, that we've been kind of having a look at, Father and I. Well, Father actually has been just been telling me about it, um, but it is quite exciting. There is a rogue hair. I'm just going to see if I can get... Yeah, got him. <laughs> and there's this tiny little... Oh, poo pants. I've dropped him. Fortunately, not in the paint. <laughs> this tiny little... I don't know. Effort. Sticking outside of his hood. It requires some detail. Just there. But it is so small. I nearly lost control of the brush then. Whew. Okay, now I've got some hoses on his back here, haven't I? Let's do those as well. I do feel that my silver paint is going on quite thick, which is a bit weird for uh, an airbrush paint. And it's a little bit annoying considering I decided to go in thin. <laughs> um, but it is giving a good coverage. The details are like the hose ribbings and things that I might be losing. But there's such a small detail behind backpacks or under arms. I don't think it's worth me thin thinning it down at this stage. Um, I'll see how it goes. I'm leaving the, the cables for now. It's the hoses that I'm painting there. Hose on his arm looks okay. one of those features that, that little qualities of silver paint I don't like it's quite I find it a very thick paint but if as soon as you start to add things to it to water it down it just loses its capacity to to actually cover just making sure I've filled in all the edges There we go. Okay, that's that guy done. What I need to do is other arm. Okay. Pop that bad boy off there. So we just got this pauldron here. looks like to be another bionic arm because why wouldn't you Silver was always going to be the time-consuming part. 
if you remember when I did the Marshall, um, I, I still did it by brush, but there was a lot of the silver that I actually did by airbrush. Um, and while it gave me a good cover, I felt that it was very difficult to um, spray accurately into areas where I'd be ruining like orange, you know, orange parts that I've already painted with overspray. So I still had to pick and choose the areas that I could paint. And I think with with all the effort that I put into it, I think it was um, time time lost rather than time gained. As I'm sure you can imagine. All right, bionic hand. Elbow cap there. Just trying to be careful around the back part of this gun here because I could just slap it on of course but I did spend time last week applying white to the back of the gun to try and get you know like a blank canvas to start painting the um, the wood color on there so I'm just gonna be careful there as well seems to be that the silver paint um, doesn't paint so well over white which seems a bit odd you'd think white would be like a really good um, sort of undercoat color for it I'm having a much better time painting over the orange I don't know why that is it could just be the way I paint or my perception of things I've also got a hand here and we know that this guy has a bionic arm on the other side as well and that hand also looks mechanical so he's got bionic legs from the knees down and bionic arms from the elbows out again just making sure that I'm not missing any areas it's very easy to do just across the top of the hand there for example his thumb on the inside Though these could be details lost from being behind, it, you know, I, I know, that's, that's not okay. Okay, so there's that arm done, now it's just this hand underneath the gun. Just make sure that I'm still in shot, I haven't looked at the screen there for a while. <laughs> Actually seem to have the focus and the zoom uh, quite quite in today. Quite in, dialed in, on point, looking good, you know, all those awkward words. We are actually now I'm having a look at it, we are actually quite close, well at the point really where we should be considering having um, an intermission. So um, yeah, now's a quick opportunity to, to say anything you want to say before you have a little break for just a few minutes. It's quite quiet today, not, not every show's got the roaring comment section or you know live chat, that's fine, that's cool, maybe you're not there, maybe you're living your life doing other things. Maybe you're out partying with Kyle. <laughs> I jest, of course.
Kyle doesn't give partying. He does. Done that guy's arm and hand, etc. I'm just gonna clean that brush out. Oh, and when I came home from work earlier on and I was rushing around, thought I've got to get myself some dinner. I normally have dinner at work, or my partner's normally here, makes me dinner on an evening with the show. But she's at work today, so I uh, had to go and make myself some food very, very quickly, just you know, microwave food. And um, I uh, not only did I bring myself a beer, but I got myself a little maple and pecan tart. So I'm going to have that during the intermission. I don't need to change my water. You should definitely change your water. Always change your paint water, unless you're me having a maple pecan tart. Before we go then, uh, Jeff says, no flesh colour then. No, no, there are, is no exposed flesh on any of these guys. The whole point is that they um, actually revile it. The, the whole point is that they believe that there is an omnisire, uh, uh, like a, a machine god there is supposed to be a machine god in the in the law of uh, the imperium in uh, warhammer 40,000 but the, the the adeptus mechanicus the the tech priests um are the gods of the Skitari. the Skitari are their militant arm if you like but they believe that their priests are their their gods they are their overseers for sure um but they always try to aspire to be more like the machine and the machine gods themselves so the flesh is weak so they cut off their arms and they cut off their legs uh and just kind of have lots of cybernetic implants uh and they they become almost more machine than they are um human uh it's kind of repugnant really <laughs> uh, but the idea is is that they that they maintain a human brain for that thing that we all know in like that kind of um genre is you know that it, to make the machine work best it has to have a human brain but take everything else a human away from it and you've got yourself like robocop essentially <laughs> um, but in a steampunk fashion so no there should be no exposed skin parts on them as far as i am aware there might be on the tech priests and things themselves but as far as i'm aware skatari rangers are general at least the, the rangers which have got the cloaks the rangers in the vanguard my marshal is a is is in the theme of the vanguards um he yeah they, they all have like armor completely over them um because they are supposed to like walk in very in his in hospital environments <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go for a quick break. Uh, we're a little bit late on the break day. Soz, but you know, can't always keep to good timings. Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Go change your paint water. See you in a minute.
welcome back. So, 61 Dad. Happy birthday, many happy returns. Get to do it across the whole world. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I didn't have time to go and get some vodka. I only had time to go and get a beer. Because uh, a vodka, a vodka, some beer and vodka, don't do that. Awful. Vodka is your tipple of choice. Um, but yeah, I couldn't find any of the decent stuff in the shop that I went to. So it was a beer this evening. Hope you've had a great day. I understand you're going out tomorrow evening for a meal and whatever. Hope you have a lovely time. Anyway, I am still here painting. I had a quick break, refocused my eyes a little bit, and uh, I had my little maple pecan tart, because I do love those, they are lovely. Um, and I've just got stuck straight back into this, because it's one of those jobs where I don't, I don't want it to last <laughs> for as long as it could go on for. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those jobs that could just go on and on and on. So I'm just trying to get all that silver work done as quick as I, not as quick as I can, but as quick as I can. It's an aw awkward way of saying it. Um, yeah. I, I don't think I'm going to have to do a second coat on them, which is good. I had to with the, with the legs. I did those by, by brush as well, uh, but I put uh, paint retarder in them just to kind of help the paint last a little bit longer. But it was just going on a little bit too watered, too watered on, too watered down, too water, yeah, too watered down. Uh, so it took two coats. And um, though that is generally the way that you should paint because it goes on thin, these are rare brush paints anyway. They go on thin enough. So, yeah, I, it wasn't like I was putting them on, putting on two coats to to make sure that the paint went on thin. It was going on water thin, and um, yeah, it wasn't covering very well at all. This now today is going on quite well. And I've just ruined a little bit. So I'm going to have to get in there quickly with a watered down brush. I know that you can't see what I'm painting right now. That was a deliberate move just to kind of break up the pace of the show a little bit. But there's just a little bit of overpaint over one of the sides of the hoses there. Now, episodes in the past, at this point in the show, we've done things like Community Spotlight, which we were talking about earlier on the show. So if you're new to the show or if you, it's been ages since you've seen something, <laughs> uh, we normally do a Community Spotlight here where you know someone has sent in pictures or something that they've done and wanted to talk about it. We've talked about uh, Kyle stuff before, you know, my co-host is always here. <laughs> uh, or just stuff that I've seen online uh, where it's relevant to themes that we've been talking about or just something that I found really really cool uh, haven't done community spotlight um, for a long long time I've, I suppose I've been busy and not really been searching around or had much time to kind of play around with photos on my own account um, but also no one's really sent anything into me or requested for me to show stuff off there are photos of the community stuff over on Facebook so you can go and have a look over there also on Discord as well there's there's loads of our Albums and things that you can get all your stuff uploaded onto if you want to. Luke's really good at doing that. I'm terrible at it at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can also go over to Instagram and have a look at all the stuff that I do. Um, most of my finished stuff gets put up onto Instagram, and sometimes I put little work it, uh, works in progress because uh, sometimes it's ages before I put something up there. So yeah, head on over to all of those places, have a little look. If you like what we do, consider liking us or following us or even potentially subscribing. Such a little gesture from you, uh, but it means a lot to me, means a lot to Kyle. Uh, really trying to make this community grow, trying to make the channel bigger and better uh, than what it is. I realize my hair is really tall, so I'm just gonna brush it over there. I'm letting it grow out for a while because why not? Um, so yeah subscribe smash the button push the subscribe tell a friend make the community grow hit the little bell icon which is down there somewhere so that you know when i go live and you're not aware of it you get told like the internet gods and the omnissiah that was a crossover joke from anyone ignore it subscribe please it, it really helps and, and i love it when you do thanks 
Anyway, let's take you back over to my workbench and you'll see what it is that I'm painting. I've repaired the damage by the way, it was just under this arm here. You can still see there's a little bit of overpaint in there, it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. A tiny little bit is in there. Um, we we don't, don't just always do uh, community spotlight. We also talk about um, I call it shout outs, which is you know if if there's a company, private company or or a big company that just do something really well or provide you know, provide a good service. Maybe they um, just have a good range of products or something. Or you just use them a lot, and you kind of want to tell everybody else about it. Then, then let me know because I'll I'll, I'll talk about them and, and I'll shout it out. I'm, I don't, you know, there's no paid adverts or anything here. No, no one pays me to kind of preach about them. I just believe in, um, you know, sharing knowledge for the community because we all are in this together. We 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 do this hobby because we love it. Hopefully. Um, so yeah, I, I will gladly shout out about a company that you've had good experience with or you just kind of want to talk about them. I've done that in the past. There's loads of um, companies that I've used, some personal companies, some big corporative companies or whatever. Um, and you can find links to them in the description of this video. Of course, there's other YouTubers out there as well. Hi, John. Hi, Ruben. Yeah, loads of you who've been supporting this channel. I haven't forgotten about you. Thank you so much for all the support that everyone gives me. I love it. It's wonderful. Thank you. So, yeah. So, when you want to talk about, let's talk about it. Bring it on the show. can hear even through my noise cancelling headphones my cat in the house going absolutely bonkers <laughs> as an amateur astronomer 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 <laughs> I recently bought myself a new telescope I have nowhere else to put it so it normally lives in here in the studio and it's literally it's just outside the door because um, there's nowhere else to store it um, and I have this feeling that she might be destroying my new telescope <laughs> cats man I love my cat no one else could destroy my telescope my cat can right just gonna wash that brush off again some comments going in Jeff says cheers happy birthday mate Luke says one thing taking a year to uninstall time for the guy yeah <laughs> one thing taking the time a year to uninstall yeah i see what you're saying and then time to paint the goblin yeah do it man do it is it what go goblin is it is it is it a gretchen goblin from the 40k universe is it a gobbo from the warhammer fantasy is it age of sigma is it a blood bowl is it a classic one is it a newer one tell me tell me tell me Earlier on, I had a cramp in my arm. Now I have a cramp in my knee. I think it's just because I've been working really hard today. This is where if I was in the office, someone was saying, harder than normal. <laughs> but no, it was, it was hard work today. I left my office environment behind and uh, went into the residential house where all our children guests stay and live. We had a big changeover, change over the entire residential house. There was just, there was just basically one housekeeper in today, and um, I couldn't have that. I couldn't have that person doing all that work on their own. So I went in like a hero, like a hero, and I helped all day. It, it's hard work, but we got there. We did it.
bit too much paint on the paintbrush there. I think. Now, of course, once all this uh, silver has been painted, not going to go in with the non oil. Uh, I, I was using it a little bit on the Marshall just to help add a little bit of definition and contrast between some of the uh, closer colours. I see closer colours like the blue on the overalls to the, the metal on the legs. Sometimes it's quite hard to distinguish where one ends. I nearly ruined the orange on the hood there again. Um, but uh, I've been using the Basilicanum Grey, <coughs> excuse me, to kind of add texture, not texture, but you know, kind of the the illusion of texture to the metal. It works really well for this painting style. I think we've got a bit too much silver in there. I'm just going to see if I can remove it out. So that clogged up the eye lens. When that Basilicanum Grey goes in, on, on, onto this miniature, into this miniature, it will just add a new level to it. It'll, it'll add, it'll tone the brightness of it down a little bit and kind of make it all blend and it will really show up all of these, you know, all of the details, etc. in there. I think... I was going to say, now that's him done, it's not. There's another little piece that sticks off the side of this head. I don't like those. They're really difficult to paint. So easy to get wrong as well. Ruin everything. The silver looks so out of place before it's had any kind of shading or washing or anything like that. But once it's had that next stage painted, it really works. It can often be quite gaudy looking at it at this stage. But you've just got to put that feeling to the back of your mind. And just press on. And that, of course, is the whole point of this army and this show. Just trying to keep that pace. Just not getting mired down with little details as opposed to a point with this with this army I'm actually it's kind of the middle the middle ground I'm, I'm trying to improve my painting but at the same time I'm trying to just get some stuff done because I want to have a collection whether I play with them or not I want I want to have a little thing where I put them on a little shelf and annoy my partner with how many little plastic toys I've got lying around. I find it such a, not the annoying my partner bit, but, but you know, the, the painting and collecting, it, it's, it's such a cathartic joy for me. But I do like there to be a, a finality to it. Okay, this guy is done. Just pop him here and I'm gonna pop him back onto his cork. Lovely. This is the guy who has the transuranic aquabus. Um so yeah, big gun. And I'm gonna pop this guy over here. Back onto that polystyrene bit. I'm just gonna wash this brush out because it's getting a bit clogged up. Uh, Jeff says that's a nice silver. Seems to have uh, seems to have some depth to it. Yeah, it, it is a nice silver. I find silvers very difficult to work with. I find them very hard to like. Um, but of all the silvers that I have used, this is one of the nicer ones. Um, I was going to start experimenting with my everlasting uh, 135th Panther, which is just behind the camera there. Um, it. I was going to try using um, gun metal style uh, pigments, which you just kind of apply with um, a silicon brush. So when I say silicon brush, I mean something like like this, like a sculpting tool. You could apply this, you could apply it with your finger if you want to, uh, and then use like fixing agents to hold it in place. Um, 
but I, I never did get around to buying it using it I, when I was working on the Panther I just kind of wanted to make progress I was buying lots of different things to try things out and I was never actually progressing anywhere with it but that, that is another thing that you could do I don't know if it's very easy to apply like a paint um, it might be quite messy maybe that's an alternative or maybe you could just I don't know cover it in tin foil like um like brass not brass rubbing like when you're rubbing on gold leaf I think it'll look very good give it a try though <laughs> there are of course other silvers out there games not games workshop green stuff well I beg your pardon and do a chrome paint which actually looks really good for what it is being a chrome paint the problem with chrome paint when you're painting onto miniatures is that it often looks very very cheap despite the quality of it which is very good from what I've seen anyway I've not actually used it myself but what I've seen the quality of it looks very good but when you paint it onto a little plastic model it always looks like a little plastic toy um, and you know when they're painted in chrome paints it, it, it's a toy and, and any skill not skill any kind of depth that you can get out of painting and, and make a miniature look like a piece of art that you know is, is grim or dark or whatever just is lost in my opinion however one of the projects that I've got not coming up soon but I do want to venture into it is working with that chrome paint I've got some Necrons that a friend gave me or well, they are all unmade they just cut off the sprue it's the uh, Necron uh, speed bike things I forget what they're called I've fought against them so many times now um, they're absolutely night absolute nightmare on the game table uh, they're beautiful models um, and I was gonna do some kind of cool techniques with them playing with the chrome paint mixing up some techniques that I'm gonna develop over the next few weeks is one of those things that I'd like to do it might be completely rubbish it might be really good but we'll find out that's a chrome paint give it a try from green stuff world you, you use it in, in the same way that you would any other paint now on a tutorial video or a, a, a I was thinking, I'm sure it's a tutorial video video or a product reveal video I don't know why I'm struggling to say that um, they were playing around or I saw them playing around with non oil and other shades or washes and things to kind of add depth and detail to them um, I've just realized I'm painting this hand silver but that's a gloved hand okay cool I won't paint that any further I'll come back to that later I did paint the muzzle of this gun silver so I'm gonna paint the end of that uh, that's what happens when you're yapping yapping uh, there's a little Thing here I might, I might do that should I do that silver or brass I'll do that silver um, yeah they were they, they were basically washing the uh, chrome paint as you would any silver like like I like I do they were applying null oil or you know various other things and as soon as you do that the luster if you will that makes chrome chrome is gone straight away so it's almost pointless using it because you are either going to end up with something that doesn't look like chrome or something that looks like a cheap toy um, so my experiments are going to be playing with something that's quite different and a style or a technique that might bring the very best of that chrome out I don't know it is literally speculative and I've got to develop the technique with another project before I go anywhere near that so that's something quite way off in the future at the moment um, but yeah chrome paint There we go. There could be quite a few other features on this gun that I would want to paint silver. Like there's a magazine in there as well. I think I might paint that. I might do that now. There's a little handle here that I could paint silver. 
and some mechanisms but there's also some other bits and pieces that would be quite nice in gold so um yeah i think i'm just going to try and pick and choose what it is that i do maybe i won't do the magazine shall i do the magazine in gold or shall i do it in silver i'm gonna have to paint that hand black later on Ah, Jeff says, I wonder if you could use the chrome paint for a silver highlight. Yeah, you could do. I use this silver here, which is just called silver. Uh, so this is from the same uh, game, game air range. So I use, um, you can see the differences between the two. That one on the top here is the one that I normally use, I'm using now. And then there's this bright silver here. Oh, I just throw them everywhere. Magazine, gold or brassy colors or silver. Yeah, because you've got a little bolt action rifle and everything here. Should I do it? Should I do all the details in gold, including the magazine, the handle in brass or gold, or should I do silver? While I'm waiting for that, I will wash my brush out. And I will leave that guy to the side there. So I may come back to him. Depending on what you guys say. Okay. This is just one of those slog nights, one of those nights where you just have to just press on and just keep on going. This is just, I'm sorry that the show is just all about painting silver, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's got to be done. I've got to get there slowly and surely. That's what this show is all about though, right? It's about just kind of finding a place that we can all go and do it. Paint the barrel. The barrel looks like it's wood. So I painted the muzzle end there. It's like a wooden, um, a wooden rifle. The whole thing, I think, is supposed to be wood. Because it's supposed to be like, um, oh, and the mag. Paint the barrel and the mag. So I've got the, the muzzle at the end here, which I've painted metal. I think this is all supposed to be a wood effect along here with some like filigree parts on there. There's a little bolt, the receiver here, and a bolt action and whatever, and then there's the mag. Should I paint all that silver? While you're answering that, I'll move on to this next guy. Guy number four. Get some more paint. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to see if I can not spill my beer and drink it. Oh. No, I can't. Oh, that is a nice ale. Paint the top. Like that top, because if I if I bring it in, close here, in my light in, you can see that there's like a line that runs all the way along. So you're saying paint the top like it's an exposed piece of metal, and underneath is the is the wood. Yeah, is that what you're saying? That sounds like a cool idea. And paint it all silver. Is that was is that also what we're saying? It's a nice little community project, this. I like this. People have suggested to me what colours and themes and things to do. Ah, don't do that then. Okay, cool. It doesn't have to be wood. It can be whatever I want it to be. Right. Next guy. I quite like starting with the shoulder. It's a good place to start, I think. It's quite a bit of paint on the brush. Let's move that down. I thought there was a fly crawling on the table beside me, but it was the reflection of my brush and some of the tools I've got beside me. I got proper freaked out then. I was in here last night uh, on my maths class because I do an online maths class. And um, I thought, could feel something on my arm. And I looked over and there, there was a spider the size of a dinner plate crawling up my arm. <laughs> I kept my cool. I, I, I don't fear spiders, but I don't like things crawling on me. It's the size of a small dog. But I kept it together on video. 
but for the rest of the evening I can safely say that any time I felt even the slightest breeze I thought it was something out of a horror film so this is another bionic arm and this one actually goes up inside the sleeve there so I'm going to paint all of this bit it's got like little pistons Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. What am I? I'm like six. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. This show, not made for kids, but it should be safe for kids. Bring your kids along. If your kids enjoy painting, maybe something they enjoy doing with you. Yeah, bring them along. Oh, there's a little mould line just along that hose just there that I didn't get rid of. Too late for that now. It's very small and imperceptible and it's not like there are mould lines all over the models and stuff that will draw your attention to it too much so I'm quite keen to just let that go. If it was a character model like the Marshall then I would have been all over that. I would have been stopping the show, knives out, sandpaper. Okay, quick check of the time, it's quarter two. <laughs> So we're going on with more about the, the gun there, you're saying ju just the top, so paint the top just like a Lee Enfield. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. The air rifles that I use as part of my activity sessions that I, that I teach have got the same, but they're actually, they're painted black, but they are exposed metal from the wooden, oh my new ones are actually plastic, but yeah, that, that, it, that is a part of the gun that is exposed, so that, that would work. And you're saying paint it silver, yeah? I'll have a check on the other um, rifles as well, the smaller versions, and see if they're like the same. But rather than doing them silver now, what I'll do is I'll paint the um, I'll paint the wood effect on them first. Then I'll come back to them. Just so I don't have to do so much silver all in one go, because it is actually making me go a bit insane. Yeah, wood under silver barrel brass straps. Yep, I got you. Okay, cool. That is that is what I'll do then. Okay, let's do the front of this guy's collar here. I'm painting these little edging bits here just in case they're exposed when I put the model together. It's also quite satisfying. All right, we're getting quite close to the end of the show. Um, so, yeah, if you've got anything that you want to bring up, talk about, now's a good time to bring it up. It's been a quiet one tonight. We we get them sometimes. To be fair, with the amount of silver work that I feel like I'm fighting to get through, it's quite nice to have just a quiet one. Of course, you could just be watching this back on playback. Let us know in the comments if you are. I have an itchy eye. There we go. How are you guys getting on with your miniature painting tonight or whatever it is that you're painting? Not many of you on tonight, not many of you painting tonight, but I would love to know what it is that you're doing as you're watching this show so maybe you're watching it back on replay if just a little bit of company while you get on with some painting what is it that you're doing how are you getting on with it show us some photos we want to know i want to know
Lord, you know, I think it's good to get through all of this, Silver, but I'll be glad when it's done. Sometimes, it's a bit of a chore. I think my brush is in need of a bit of a wash. Got some little pouches in there as well. Just trying to avoid putting too much silver on things that I don't want it on. I can paint over it, I know, but... Don't want any loss of detail. Don't want the possibility of the colours being affected or anything like that. I'm just going to wash this brush out so I think it's getting a bit stodgy again. Luke says, uh, how would one do uh, scarring on green skin? That's an interesting question. You could just do uh, a paler green or a darker green, just something that kind of opposes the scheme that you've got so far, just to kind of show it. You could maybe make it look a bit sore by maybe kind of pinking it up or making it a bit more purple, depending. Um, or just do classic red. Good question. Your goblin clearly has scars then, sir. Jeff says, uh, like we said before, if you think you could be a pro painter, can you paint the Silver Army all day without going potty? Uh, no, is the answer. Um, uh, like I said, I was I was highly contemplating it some years ago, training myself up, practicing lots, and actually kind of led into the discovery of this show um, where I decided that actually... No, I can't. I actually am an outdoorsy kind of a person. Uh, that is my job now. Uh, even though I'm an office worker, it is an office in the outdoors. And uh, if I don't get enough of it, I, I go absolutely mental. I suppose some people use this hobby to kind of um, get away from the indoors. Well, you know, from the, from the office environment, I just use it as a kind of a, like a calming, de-stressing thing, really. But no, I've, I've I've got to be in the outdoors. I couldn't I couldn't be in all day, and you, and you would have to dedicate so much, so much time to it. And as we've already seen by this show, I am not the fastest of painters, so I would not be making a lot of money. It, it would have been a very poor business choice for me. Being a bit fingers and thumbs here. Struggling to hold things. move on I, I come back to it make sure there's not a little bit that I've missed there often is so I kind of have to go back over it again just gonna wash the brush out there Jeff says light and dark green that's the obviously the choices for the scarring you you say make it darker than the base and then highlight it lighter so you kind of get this crazy contrast going on is that yeah that's a good suggestion. I like working with green, it's a beautiful colour. When you get the right when you get the right colours that work for you. Like for me, painting a Sherman tank was just glorious. All the airbrush as well was wonderful. It's such a beautiful colour, it's olive green. going to be carrying on for just a short while after the show just to see if I can get the majority of the silver done on these guys you can come and join me if you want to 
over at the Easy 8 after party. And that is over at Discord. If you haven't joined the Easy 8 after party on Discord yet, then uh, you can just scroll down into the description of this video and you will find a link to it. If you haven't got a Discord logon, it'll tell you how to do it. It's very, very easy. Uh, you do have to confirm it by email. It's part of the standards for uh, Discord, but that's easy. It's just, you, there's an email that says, just click here. But making a profile on Discord is just as easy as making a profile on anything else. Super simple. And uh, yeah, you can just come and be a part of it. There's loads of little channels down the side um, of the screen when you join in. And uh, yeah, you can put the photos in there. You can just kind of chat about stuff. Uh, Luke is very active on there. Hi, Luke. Thanks for making it, Luke. Um, yeah, you can share pictures on there. It's also uh, an area where all the videos for the, the live show here get, get stored. So if you ever want to go back and not trawl through YouTube, then you can do so on there very easily. You can come in, uh, just join in with any conversation or chat live or otherwise on there then any of the numerous topics that we got going or you can come and join in a couple of the video chats you don't have to of course put your own video on you can just see the video of everybody else you can join in the voice chat or you can just type to everybody in that chat as well choice is yours nice little community on there i'm not on it as often as i want to be but that will change as the season gets darker this guy is done. I'm just gonna have to move over to his over to his gun. Just here. So these guns, they are the same. They have that top line all the way along. So metal all across the top there. I like I like the idea. That's what I'll do. Uh, Luke says, so like making the patch lighter than the skin, then using a dark in the center just as, yeah. Oh, I was thinking the other way, so making it like a dark patch and then a lighter line. But yeah, I suppose light then dark, whichever way you like. I keep washing my brush out. Just got to keep that pace going. Just got to keep that pace. The army will be done. These units will be completed. That is hard to hold on to. Okay. This guy doesn't have a robot hand. He has a glove with a metal patch on it. So he'll have a black hand with a metal square. Incidentally, just like the marshal. Jeff says all the other way. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, cool. So I was right too. Thanks. Oh, so unfortunately, there's a little bit of, um, bit of, not flash, but it just kind of scarred the plastic a little bit when I was uh, carving the sprue flash off of it. Just a little bit, just there. Nothing, nothing that you'll really see unless you're looking for it. And you won't be looking for it because you won't know it's there. So I know, you guys know, but we'll just keep it between me and you. bit done there. I'm just going to paint the square on the back of his hand. Let's get that done. I might come back and do hands and stuff another time after I've done the guns or when I'm doing the guns perhaps. Actually has a little metal part sticking up from underneath his cloak. I don't know what to do with that. Maybe I'll make that silver. I can always paint over that black if I don't like it. I don't know if this is supposed to be a gloved hand or a metal hand or what now. So I'll paint it silver for now. See see what happens when it all comes together. Okay. Well, for now, that, that is done. Let's wash the brush out. 
pop him in there. This guy can all go back together. <laughs> pop him in there. Polished iron. Okay. I still got this one here to look at. I'm going to come back to this. I'm not going to do any parts on the gun yet. Um, so I'm going to pop him back with his owner. Pop that one in there. There we go. And then, of course, I've got the last one. It has taken me two hours to get this far. This is why <laughs> this is why I need my own show where <laughs> the, the community just keep pressuring me to get stuff done. But we are looking really good. I'm, lo I'm looking over at what I've done so far and the silver contrasting you know, standing out from the from the orange is, is looking really good. And I am really pleased with it. It's just um, it's demoralizing because it just takes so long to do. Right. I'm sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. Just how long it takes to get some of that stuff done. So, not going to start this guy right now. Um, I'm actually going to do it after the show, during the Easy 8 after party. Um, so I'll just kind of get that, that one done there. But that's all I'm going to be on for at the after party tonight. Um, am I over-pronouncing that? Am I get after party? Um, yeah, after party. It's a little bit British of me, isn't it? Um, let's come away from the workbench. Here I am. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be on for, uh, for too long. I haven't seen my partner an awful lot lately, and I can just hear her coming into the house now. Uh, so the show is ending perfectly to go and see her. So I'm going to catch, paint this guy, get him done, so that I, I, I'm up to scratch with the rest of them. Um, but if you want to come and join me over the uh, over at the Discord after eight party after eight party, then please feel free. Um, I'm starting to lose touch with my vocabulary. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just come on over the Discord and just take the mick out of me for a little while. Anyway, cheers. Still got a little bit of a beer to have. And then if it's not been busy enough, I've got to go back in again tomorrow and do it all over again. But then I get a Sunday off and then I'm away for a week. I will be back for next week. And if there is going to be any shadow of a doubt about it going ahead next week, I will communicate with you and the community Um via Facebook so do get yourself over there if you haven't been to Facebook already um, so yes I, I, I plan to be back the day before and it's just about making sure that I've got everything prepped and ready to go it will more than likely be a little bit more on the Skitari ranges which is absolutely fine in my, in my book um, but yes I, I am working earnestly on some exciting experiment projects coming very very soon within the next two weeks hopefully so um, yes I'm excited about it. I've got all the stuff just here on the side, but you can't see it because it's a bit of a surprise. Um, so, yes, I hope that you guys have had a productive evening. It doesn't feel like I've had much of a productive evening here, but actually it's one of those things where, though it's not a lot, it actually has been quite a lot because I, I've known that the, doing the silver bits is going to take me a while. But I'm, I'm nearly through it. I'm nearly through it. Just got to do this one guy here, get him done, and then I will do Basilicanum Grey over all of those kind of add that that sort of tone and texture and filter to them and then uh, onto weapons and trousers that's where we're at with those guys shouldn't take me much longer i don't think unfortunately i'm going to get an awful lot of chance to do much with them over the week i may get an opportunity to play around them on sunday uh, before i go away but that might be where that stops and unfortunately i have too much stuff to take with me i wouldn't know where to start with packing this so yeah there we go let me know how well you've got on or how well you haven't got on at all by putting up pictures over at Facebook because uh, we're over at Facebook too here uh, we're on Instagram there and of course we're here on YouTube drop us a like drop us a follow or even consider giving us a subscribe here on YouTube every little bit really helps makes me feel happy uh, and make, makes me you know grow the show a bit better for you every time so yeah that's it from me I hope you've had a wonderful evening. I've had a great evening. Thank you for the company. Happy birthday once again, Dad. I hope you've had a great day. Um, yeah, and I hope you have a lovely evening out having your meal tomorrow. Until next week, keep on painting, stay safe, be kind, and I will see you next time. Take care now.
Bye bye. Silver is everywhere.